Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss situation in Ukraine on 18th of June. Today, today we have some updates, so let's discuss them one by one. And first, let's start with uh, Kharkiv area. This is our Kharkiv and um, we have more and more updates from the front lines that the Russians are pushing back. They are trying to return every single square meter they lost during the previous Ukrainian offensive operation. And the question is, why do they do this? Uh, we know that the Russians are fighting near Ruskala Zavaya, so they are pushing from the north towards Ruskala Zavaya, trying to return this area. If we are talking about this part, like east part of this bridgehead, we can say that Rubizhne is under the Russians, according to the Russian sources. The West sources map is not updated. Maybe they have some information we don't know. And there are very heavy clashes around Verkhny Saltov and Stare Saltov. So we can say that the Russians want to return this area for one reason. If we're talking about the east part of this bridgehead, they want to prevent any attempt, any Ukrainian attempt of crossing this river. Because we know that, according to the Russian sources, at least Hatomlia is under the Ukrainians' control. So of course, this position is very dangerous, and uh, having such a bridgehead right in the Russians' back is not very good for the Russians. So, we can say that the Russians are attacking Stare Saltov, trying to attack. Mm, to tell the truth, um, I understand the reason of attack towards Stare Saltov. We understand everything and the price and the value of the bridgehead on this side of the river. But I don't understand the purposes of any Russian attack towards Ruskala Zavaya. Mm, maybe there is like now we can see, now we see the totally opposite picture that we saw in the previous time when the Russians were retreating from this area with one purpose to force Ukrainians to leave their uh, fortress and uh, to make them split and stretch their front line along all along these blue lines. So with help of this, the Russians were. Uh, had some possibility at least to reduce the Ukrainians with their artillery but now they're moving back and there are a few reasons why uh, it happens first of all of course the Ukrainians are retreating because they understand that there is no reason of keeping this area uh, because of big losses because of logistic and so on it's much more better they understand they compared the time when they were stayed in Kharkiv and you know, with the time when they stretched the front line along this area and they understand uh, they calculated all losses they calculated like logistic everything and they decided to retreat towards Kharkiv because it's like a better position because it will it may force the Russians to go back to establish control over Slatinia, over uh, Ruskala Zavaya, Tsirkuni. This Imagine yourself, like this area first was under the Russians. Uh, it was reduced by the Ukrainians shelling them. The Ukrainians established control over this town and the Russians started reducing of this area. So there is just only ruins. And now the Ukrainians are retreating and the Russians are taking back these towns one more time. So I don't know what are they taking back. Maybe just like land, that's it. But but uh, the only, uh, if I'll give you my opinion, the only explanation of the reasons why the Russians are pushing back is, um, is Donetsk. So Donetsk is very far from this area, of course, but we know that Donetsk is under very heavy shelling. If you take a look at Donetsk on the Russian sources map, you see that there is no place. Uh, the updates on this map is like 12 hours updates. So this map, at least um, this configuration of this map, shows the situation in Donetsk for the last 12 hours. You see that the central part is under very heavy shelling, so there is no even place where people can hide. And today, exact, I don't know why they did, didn't they do this in previous days, but this morning the Donetsk People Republic used the alarm, like a shelling alarm, for the first time since the February of this year. So like announcing and trying to say people that uh, they should hide themselves in a safe place. So my opinion that the Russians are going back to Kharkiv with the same reason. With the same reason. So if you are shielding Donetsk and you don't want to stop, so that's mean that we are going to do the same with Kharkiv. Because like I'm, I see that the Ukrainians are not going to stop. We heard Putin in his like speech. He told that um, it's not it's not it's not reasonable to attack uh, the Ukrainians' fortified position in front. And he was talking about Avdiivka, about Avdiivka, about 
uh, this area, he told that there is no reason to do this. And he told that, as we discussed in um, our previous videos, that uh, the Russians are trying to encircle this area and attack this town from the back. So this is the plan, like we discussed. And he told that this situation may took time. I'll give you my opinion. Uh, if nothing changes, this, this offensive operation may take like... Uh, May, may be finished just by September. So imagine yourself like today is 18th of June and September like in the entire summer in front of us. So we can say that Donetsk might be reduced, very reduced by the shillings. So this is, the, this is like the plan B. Like to start doing the same thing with Kharkiv and after, of course, there would be no shelling, of course. But if the Russians at least have some negotiation position, like you're shelling Donetsk, we are shelling Kharkiv, everybody is unhappy so let's like discuss and let's some sign some agreement so if we are fighting if we have a war so that's mean no shelling uh, no shelling no no shelling like civilians and that's it so maybe this is the reason why the russians are coming from the north towards Kharkiv just to have a powerful negotiation position with ukrainians in the further negotiations that exact that uh, obviously would be now let's move to the south and we are talking about Izum bridgehead, the area on the west uh, from Izum, this forest, the Ukrainians, we know that they have some positions here and they are still trying to cross the river and this is, uh, the river is no longer a game changer, so that's why they're trying to do this from any single place they just can do this. And this is a very big problem for the Russians, of course, and I see that the Russians are not doing anything how to solve this problem. Um, of course, they have better position in the forest because this forest, we can say, like, 70 per 80 percent is theirs but we know that ukrainians have a lot of forces much more forces than the russians so of course uh, the quantity in this case may be much more important than the quality so that's why uh, and furthermore as you can see the west sources map has been updated if you remember uh, even yesterday we saw that all this area well i will mark this area like this was under the russians so um according to the West source map, and that the Russians were almost near Velika Kamushovaha. If we take a look at the Russian source map, the Kamushu, Velika Kamushovaha is still under the Russians. But the thing is, why did West source map update this area? And I told you that, um, I will tell you that there is some reports from Ukrainians that they are, have some success in this forest, in this area with their offensive operations. Some sources reported that Ukrainians established control over Zavody, over Pridonetsk. So something happened, something is happening there. I see that the Russians um, don't give us any report about this area. Uh, to tell the truth, I don't know what is going on there. The Ukrainians report say that they are doing some success, they they're, they're, um, achieve some goals, establish control, but um, they're saying this without any euphoria. Like you see that, whoa, there is no like, whoa, we like push the Russians. If they were successful there and if the Ukrainians were able to, to control uh, Spivakovka, Pridnistrovia, Pridonetsk, I'm sure that maybe even Joe Biden would come here like to show that we are so successful but they achieved some success but i'm not sure about the real value and the real numbers and the real kilometers in this area so we're going to follow if we are talking about the next week the ukrainians if we're talking about their goals of course they need to improve their success and if we're talking about the russians they need to finally solve every single issue with grushuwaha so they will, if we are talking about we don't know who control this but if we are talking about the Russians, they are saying that they are controlling, but they need to control Grushovaha. In this case, in this case, there would be a very big danger because um, the Ukrainian army located between Petrovsk and Zavgorodny, Protokopivka and Chepil on this line, on this area. And if the Russians control Grushovaha, and we know that they control Balaklea, so with the with accumulating of big critical mass, they just come to close this area and to encircle a big amount of Ukrainian forces and to establish their position on their side. We know that the Russians still don't have critical mass for this operation, but there are a lot of rumors about mobilization. So, so maybe, maybe we, we're going to see this operation in the future. And so it's just not like we are going to see, we must see this if the Russians want to stay safe and to uh, fix 
all issues with the Ukrainians in this force because they have a lot of losses there and they need to fix this as fast as possible. Now let's talk about uh, Slavensk bridgehead north of this area. The west sources map has been updated. Now they do this much faster. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is no update about Dalina from their side, but now they're showing us that Bogorodichna is half of Bogorodichna is under the Russians' control. Bogorodichna is totally under the Russians. If you take a look at the Russian sources map, of course, uh, this is Bogorodichna. But but we see that they start to bleed. Maybe they, they just don't want to show that this town is already under the Russians, but we'll follow this situation. No updates about the town of Caprish. Still, they're saying us that this territory is under total Ukrainian control. In comparison with the Russians, we see that there is like a very powerful bridgehead. So we'll follow this. And if we are talking about the further week, about the next week, the Russians need to clear Dalina Krasnopolia. And if we're talking about some information we have from the open source, the Russians have established control over Dalina. Uh, and they still haven't updated this map because they need more confirmation about that. And they're saying that there are very heavy clashes around Krasnopolia. So the situation with Dalina is the same situation as Dovginke. I'm sure that this town is in the gray zone. I'm sure that the Russians are there. They're, like they're collect controlling just northwest part. The Ukrainians maybe still in the east part, like connected with Krasnopolia, and they're pushing them, pushing them, and pushing them. So for the next week, both sides need to. If you're talking about the Ukrainians, the, the Ukrainians for the next week, the Ukrainians need to pay more attention for, to Mayaki and Sidorva. They need to be sure that these areas will stay under their control. This is the area. This is the key area. Uh, for the Battle of Slavansk. And for the Russians, of course, the same plans establish control over Sidrova and to take Mayaki as fast as possible. Mm. Mm. And of course, Dalina and Krasnopolia to like to put point in this story. Like, this is their plans and this is their bridgehead. We will follow this situation and we will try to understand if they are able to do this mm, by the end of the next week. Because if this Towns, Mayaki, Sidorov, Krasnopoli, Dalino falls. We can say it about collapsing and the, the real battle for Slavonsk would start in this case. About Siversk, you see that more and more blue uh, things appear on the map. These new trenches in this area, more and more trenches in this area. The, the Ukrainians are preparing their defense zone in this area and they're waiting for attacks towards Siversk. We discussed Severs many times, like the only one road and so on. But yesterday we got another opinion about the Russians' plans in this area, and we discussed that maybe the Russians are not even planning to attack and to encircle Lysychansk. Maybe they just need to freeze. Maybe it was a plan, like to force, uh, to force uh, Ukrainians to push there as much force as possible, and after that to blockade them because we know that everything that comes there stays there. And for now, they're, maybe they're planning to attack towards Bakhmut and try to encircle and surround this Bakhmut from the south and from the north. We'll discuss this area one more time in the near future. And by the way, while creating this video, there is another mark in this area uh, near Mitolkina. Mitolkina marked as the Russians, like the f f confirmation, some confirmation, and another confirmation about this area that Mironovka is under the Russians. We will come to this area uh, in on the West Sources map, and there are also a lot of very interesting updates. Now let's move towards uh, Severodonetsk. Now let's discuss Severodonetsk. This is Mitolkina. I just received confirmation from the, another confirmation from the Russians that this area is under their control. About Severodonetsk, I'm not sure that anybody should do anything. Of course, if the Russians want to achieve some media victory, they need to force the Ukrainians to surrender. Like 2,000 soldiers as foreigners, it will be like a great media victory. But if we're talking about kilometers, buildings and bridgehead, I'm not sure that the Russians need to do anything with this area because it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous because of uh, shelling from Lysychansk with the straight fire from their artillery system. Um, maybe there is some interesting situation that the Russians should solve with Vorovna, and Mitolkina, Borivsky, but not with the industrial plant. So we'll see. There is two differences. If they want to achieve media victory, they need to take control over this territory. But if they want to save their soldiers and uh, like to wait a little bit, maybe it's the solution and the best solution in this area. They need to wait while situation in Gorsk Zolotoy area confirms in, and solves uh, in their side. If we're talking about the Ukrainians, they also need just the media victory. This is the only thing they can achieve there. Holding and keeping Severodonetsk 
every single day of keeping Severodonetsk industrial plant is another media victory for the mm -hmm. Ukrainians. So that's they need to do this and it helps them much because every single media victory brings them more and more heavy weapon from the West. So we'll follow, we'll follow this situation as well. Now let's discuss Gorska Zlatoya. This map is not updated. I'm not planning to do this right now. Uh, if we're talking about, let's take a look at the Russian sources map. Uh, Vrubovka is under the Russians. Toshkovka is under the Russians. And you see that the front line, the great dots, is right, um, right in front of Nova Ivanovka. So this is the main priority and main goal, vital purpose of the Russians for the next week. Nova Ivanovka, this one, this area, this like long village that leads from this forest towards Gorska. So this is the main idea and main goal. They have Rubivka under their control and falling of Nova Ivanovka means encirclement of Zgirska Zolotoya area. So this is their main purpose and they need to do this. If we're talking about the Ukrainians, the same position. They need to enforce their positions near Nova Ivanovka, try to keep this area as long as possible. We see that the Ukrainians don't have any idea of even starting any offensive operation. This is not their tactic. They're not doing this because of being like pushed from uh, every side. So the only goals they can achieve in this area to hold, to keep area as long as possible. So Nova Ivanovka is the vital area for both parties. This area is the vital and this area will solve and will, will determine the situation in this cauldron for the next week. So I'm sure that the Russians are going to do this. They will try to push because today I got another confirmation from the Russian sources map that Rubivka is under their control. There is a video. It's like ruined town, totally ruined town. There is just not just even buildings are ruined. Even forest is ruined. There is nothing there. So it's like a hell on the a hell on earth. If you ask me where is the hell on earth, I can tell that Rubivka is the place where you can find hell on the earth. So this is the area. And the same situation we're gonna see with Novo Ivanovka. There are a lot of forces in Gorska Zoto, of course they will do their best to keep this territory under the Ukrainians, so we'll follow this situation. The same story about road between Solidar and oil refinery plant. There are very heavy bloody clashes along this road and of course it's a vital question for both sides if we're talking about the Russians to cross this road from three sides, from as, long, as much as possible side, to establish control over Vesele it's small farm, I mean, I don't know, but they need this just to enforce their position and then they can think what to do next or to move to the north or try to cut Bakhmut from Sivirsk from this north. So this is their vital goal. And if you're talking about Ukrainians, the same thing to establish, to keep this area under their control, not to allow the Russians to, to cross this road. Of course, crossing and establishing control over this road, it's a very big media victory for both sides. Every single day of Ukrainians on this road means every single media victory for every day. And the Russians, they need this road as fast as possible. Now we are moving to the south. It's now the most important area in this military special operation. You see the West Source map has been updated. As you can see, uh, it's a real cauldron already. And it's not even my um, my colors that I mark this area with the red, blue. I mark just a few territories like Vishnyova, Vershina, Zaitseva. You see this blue border and the red uh, thing in mid the middle of this area. And this is the area that I mark because according to the Russian sources, they established control over Vershina and Zaitseva. And they did this a very long time over Dolomitne. But if we take a look at this map, uh, Dolomitne is just marked. Uh, this area is still in the gray color, but I'm sure that in a day or two we're going to see updates because a lot of sources confirm this area maybe uh, this map is waiting for some video updates of this area Wagner's are working there but it's a very big problem for the Ukrainians because um, we understand that even uh, some part of Uglidarska power plant is under the Russians you see like they th this map shows that at least they have captured some buildings on the edge of this plant and the thing is that it's not just a cauldron, and it's already a cauldron. Mm, there is only one way, but you see that, for example, West Source map showing us about some shelling in this area. So there already the Russians are trying to cut 
the road to this area with their artillery trying to reduce any supply support or even retreat from this area but the main idea if we take a look at this area from the global scope of course town new york of course, it would be also a very nice media victory for the Russians. I think that the Ukrainians, if they want, they need to rename this town from New York back to Novgorodnya because you see it's a very big uh, front line. So we see that the Russians are trying to move towards uh, Konstantinovka from this area, trying to encircle Avdiivka. And now we see, as we discussed yesterday, that the Russians are moving also in the direction of Konstantinovka. I'm not sure that they're planning to attack Konstantinovka. I, I think that they're trying to do something with Bakhmut. Today I got another imp uh, inf confirmation about the Bakhmut that this town is on the lowland. I'm not saying that the difference between Bakhmut and the, res the territory where the Russians like 100 meters, no. But the Russian sources are saying that to attack Bakhmut is much more easier than attack Lysychansk. So we see that the Russians already in Zaitseva. It's a critical situation and I, to tell the truth, I don't want to discuss even Lysychansk anymore because as if it's true, if, if the story with Zaitseva is true, I understand that the battle for Bakhmut has already begun. And it's a very big problem for the Ukrainians. Uh, of course, I don't know about the forces that protect Bakhmut and who is there. Uh, I don't know. Um, but I see that something going on here, there. And if you're talking about the Russians, of course, they are going to do this like step by step. And first of all, after Zaitseva, they need to go a little bit to the south, to the small villages. And the main idea is to, as I, as I told you, from this area to meet forces and to encircle Taretsk. This is a very fortified uh, zone, uh, the Ukrainian defense zone. New York, Taretsk, also very big position there. And as you can see, it's like the same uh, Papasna town Papasna, this area, a lot of, it's like a big agglomeration, we haven't heard any updates from this area, but I see the, like, um, the situations that I see right now uh, tells me one important thing, that we discussed uh, the Zaluzhny defense line, the Ukraine, uh, Zelensky defense line, right, and I see uh, these is two lines uh, that these two commanders pr pr proposed to, like, to, I don't know, to their army, and they see that the Russians, with their action on the south, from uh, in, in uh, Svetlodarsk, in, in New York, in this area, they're ruining these two defense lines. Because if the thing that they are doing that we can see with Bakhmut is true, that means that that's a lot of problems with Bakhmut and that this defense line is no longer valued for the Lysychansk forces that maybe in the future can, will decide to retreat from this area. And if the Russians are going to continue their f offensive operations towards Konstantinovka from the south. Like, imagine yourself, like, if the Russians are able to attack Bakhmut, and while there is still, like, a discussion about the cauldron in Lysychansk, but there is no cauldron because nobody is planning to attack in the front. And meanwhile, the Russians is right in the suburbs of Konstantinovka. That means that this line is also have no value at all. So, so the forces that located in Lysychansk it's like useless to retreat towards this area because there is no area here anymore. Situation is very critical, interesting, and I see that the Russians want to prepare something very beautiful if we're talking about the military science. And the situation between Konstantinovka and Bakhmut is the area we should pay attention to. About Donetsk we discussed, very heavy shelling, very heavy shelling. I hope that this shelling stops. Uh, let it stop, at least if you're talking about civilians, if like military forces shell each other, it's it's war, it's normal, but if uh, anybody shells like civilians, this is not good. This is not good. There is no changes on the Gulai Polya Rehova area and no changes in uh, Nik. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching, subscribe to my channel, put your likes, I remind you that military summary condemns any violence in Ukraine and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.